Good morning and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church's Devotional Moment. I am Pastor Brenda Bird. We've been studying out of Isaiah 58. Uh, we've been talking about fasting and praying. This is part two of this teaching. And today we are still in Isaiah 58, but I'm just going to read verses five and six. Um, you can get the first part of this teaching and get it in its entirety. Verses five and six says, is such a fast as yours what I have chosen, a day for a man to humble himself and soul sorrow? Is true fasting merely mechanical? Is it only to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him to in indicate a condition of heart that he does not have? Will you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Rather, is it not? This, the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every enslaving yoke. Father, we thank you this morning for your word, and we ask you, O oh God, in Jesus' name, that you would touch our heart, touch our mind, bring illumination and revelation as we study fasting and praying together. In Jesus' name, amen. Fasting is abstaining from food for a spiritual purpose. In this teaching, we are not only going to be looking at fasting, but we are also looking at why we fast, which was lesson one. We are also going to be looking at four types of fast and steps to a successful fast. So today we're looking at the purpose. The purpose for abstaining from food is to be a spiritual purpose. Fasting is not a tool that we use to twist the arm of God so that we, he can give us exactly what we want. That is not fasting. Fasting has a spiritual purpose and that purpose is to get your flesh and my flesh out of the way so that the spirit of God can move effectively in our lives. Fasting removes the barriers to communication with God and allows the spirit man to commune directly with the heavenly father without disturbances. When a person makes a determination to fast, they are making a determination to remove the obstacles in their life to total submission to the will of God. Think about that. You are making an outward, outward statement by turning down your plate you have made it the determination to remove any obstacles, any obstacles that will hinder you from submitting to God's will. No wonder Satan is determined to eradicate this practice. Do you notice every time you try to fast, somebody decides that they want to invite you to dinner. Somebody decides they want to cook you a wonderful meal. Because this is a discipline of the spirit. This is a discipline for a, a deeper walk a straighter walk with God. So Satan wants to get us off track any way that he can. And the only thing he can do is attack us in our flesh and in our appetites. The lust of the eyes, the things that we see that we want and we like and we desire. The lust of the flesh, the things that makes us feel comfortable and satisfied. Something like, like food or, or intimacy or, or sex or anything that would but gratify that lust of the flesh, that appetite that's in the flesh, and the pride of life. Oh, everybody wants to be important. You know, you might say, oh, no, you know, I'm just a humble servant. Stop the false humility. Everybody wants to uh, uh, feel that they matter in some area of their life. It's human nature. And so the first thing we need to do in our fasting and praying is to be honest with God about who we are because he already knows. So the enemy does not want you and I to fast. This is why you get hungry. This is why your body goes through all of these type of changes when you're trying to build a disciplined life of fasting because it is spiritually healthy for the believer. Man is a triune being made up of body, spirit, and soul. We know that we are a spirit living in a body 
and we have a soul. This is where our will and our psyche and our emotions and our thought life rests. And this is why the Lord tells us in Romans 12, 1 and 2, not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Why? Because his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts is higher than our ways and his ways are higher than our thoughts. However, he's able to do great and wonderful things in our lives, brothers and sisters, but it's all because of obedience. It is the spirit that came from God and longs to be re reunited with God. Given the opportunity, the spirit will reach out to God and communicate with him. These three parts of the person, however, compete for influence. For spirit can influence your soul and your soul can influence your flesh. If you are in tune spiritually with God, your soul has no choice but to delight in the decisions of your spiritual life your flesh submits to the authority of your soul and they both come into communion and come unto objection to the holy spirit so this is why we fast not to twist god's arm but to draw nearer to him to have a clearer vision to have a clearer hearing and heart receptive and a spirit of obedience Oh, praise the Lord. I pray these teachings, these devotions are blessing you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his glorious countenance towards you and give you his peace. God bless you. Enjoy your day. See you next week.